Welcome back to Merchant Bay, and welcome back to the Outdoor Marketplace. Now that the marketplace is completed, it's time to begin building our way towards the back of the bay, where the majority of the village shops and houses will be located. The first order of business will be deciding how to continue this road from where it currently ends. Come with me, I'll show you what I mean. Here's where the road ends. We'll need to continue it towards the back of the bay. As you can see, we have a terrain issue to deal with. When considering how to build something in-game, I often wonder what people in the real world would do. Would it have been easier for them to raise and lower the terrain as needed to level out this ground? Or would building a bridge be a better solution? Or would avoiding this area by going around it make more sense? In this case, going around doesn't really solve the problem. If you've been following this series, you'll know that I prefer to build with the terrain whenever possible. So, for me, raising the terrain through here is out of the question. In keeping with the lore of the land, this road is traveled by merchants and their carts on their way to and from the marketplace. So we need to avoid paving our road up and down steep hills. It also needs to be wide enough to allow easy passage for Halder and Halstein and their cart as they travel from their home in the village to Halder's space at the outdoor market. Before building the existing roadway, I used a log beam as a measuring device. In this way, I was able to determine that the road should be about 4 meters wide to accommodate carts of this size. But realistic building decisions and the lore that I'm piecing together aren't the only important considerations. I also need to consider what will make this roadway more visually appealing to me and to you, the viewer. All things considered, I believe this is the perfect place to build our first bridge. Let's get to work. I have a rough idea of what I want to build, but before settling on a design, I'll need to get an idea of how long the bridge needs to be. I'll use log beams and log poles to do that. We'll place two log beams and a log pole to support them. Then we'll continue this process all the way across. With two 4 meter log beams between the log poles, our finished bridge will be 48 meters long. Now we'll do the same thing for the other side. It looks like the terrain here will need to be raised, but we'll get to that later. With the length figured out, I can determine the center of the bridge and begin to flesh out the design. The plan is to have a stone pillar in the center which will help support a wooden structure on either side. And I have an idea as to how the bridge can serve a secondary purpose. More on that later as well. I wish I could say that I know how this bridge will turn out, but that's not the case. Other than a simple log footbridge, this is the first bridge I've ever built. I have the basics worked out, but none of the details. There are a lot of parts to a bridge, and a lot of repetition in its construction. Even with the power of Aethir to give me the stamina to speed things up, I think that showing you the placement of every stone and wood piece could get boring. But there's a power greater than that of Aethir. Is it the awesome woodcutting power of the Elder? Nope. It's the power of editing. <laughs> to keep things moving along, I'll show you how I build each new piece or section, then I'll cut to that piece or section finished across the entire bridge. You've already seen the placement of the poles, but we'll need more of them. Now we'll add these cross beams. These beams distribute the weight across the width of the bridge and keep the poles upright. Now we'll build abutments at either end of the bridge. Abutments support the lateral pressure of the bridge and act as retaining walls to keep the ground under the approach to the bridge from eroding away. The abutment at the other end will provide us with the secondary use that I spoke of earlier, but we'll get to that once the bridge is completed. 
This row of stone wall 2x1s needs to be lowered on each abutment so that the stone doesn't show through the decking that will be placed here. Next we'll add the decking, which will make building the rest of the bridge a lot easier. Now we'll add 2 meter wood beams coming off of this angle and snap a 1 meter beam onto either end. These will look like support beams for the decking and add a bit of depth to the side of the bridge. Next we'll add 26 degree trusses which will span the distance from either end of the bridge to the center pier. I had to do a bit of experimenting off camera to come up with this design. Now that I have a design that I can refer to, I'll show you how I'd build another one. At some point during the construction of this truss, I used a door to add a snap point to something. I don't remember where, why, or how I did it, but because I did, the truss has moved towards the center of the bridge just a bit. As a consequence, this lower level of wood beams allow the perpendicular 1 meter beams to poke through creating what looks like an ornamental cap on the side. A happy accident that I then had to learn how to recreate. In case you didn't know, a door has three snap points. There's a snap point in the center and another snap point on either side of the center. By placing a door on the side of the stone pier, I can snap a wood pole very close to the edge instead of where it would normally snap. To check that this is the correct snap point to recreate the ornamental cap, I can build over and down through this one meter wood beam. With the correct snap point set, we can begin building our truss. Only that wasn't the correct snap point. The pole is in the correct position, but the snap point for the 26 degree beams isn't the top or bottom of the one meter pole. It's the two meter wood beam railing in the middle, which was free placed in the original design. Looking at it now, it all makes perfect sense. But at the time, I spent several hours trying to build a second truss from the snap points on this one meter pole. I wasn't recording when I built the first one, and I was in a free flow state, just building and having fun. By the time I finished the original truss, I didn't remember how I started. Things were changed, a door was used to create a snap point somewhere, I couldn't remember where, and I didn't even know if that mattered. I built from the stone pier to the end several times, only to realize that the last beam didn't end up at the correct position. Eventually I figured out that I needed to build from the snap point on the free placed railing. It's not uncommon to see people comment, I could never do that, about builds they've seen, either in pictures or videos. When you appreciate a painting, you don't see the artist painting over mistakes, or changing the color of some object in the scene. When you listen to a song that you appreciate, you don't hear the composer changing the intro, or extending the last chorus, or struggling to find the right lyric. All you see of the painting, and all you hear of the song, is the finished result. It's not difficult to make a complex build look easy in a video. I could have glossed over all the trouble I had recreating the truss on the other side, and just presented the finished result. So why am I telling you this? Because with the great power of editing, comes great responsibility. And like the painting and the song, scenes like this aren't often included in a built video. Don't be fooled into believing that others never make mistakes and follow flawless plans. Don't be discouraged by your pitfalls. You can achieve more than you realize, for there's a power even greater than the power of editing. We've got a bridge to finish. There were a few trees that needed to come down, and I decided to change the top layer of stone on the abutments and on the center pier from stone 2x1s to stone floor 2x2s. They have a smoother, more finished look to them, which creates a nice contrast to the stone 2x1s below. Raising the terrain here certainly makes more sense than extending the bridge, so let's get that done. Then we'll build a roof for the bridge. I've placed these poles here to show the absolute minimum area that needs to be raised. Then we'll blend that into the existing terrain to make it look as natural as possible.
I knew from the beginning that I wanted the roof to be separated somehow from the trusses. But putting support poles on the decking was not a good look in my opinion. The solution was to use one meter beams to move the roof pieces away from the trusses. And lowering the roof another meter helps to accentuate that separation. As mentioned, each of the trusses are placed a bit more towards center. Therefore, the roof tiles will overlap. Here, that overlap creates what looks like a raised beam in the center. Another accidental design feature. I added some support beams and some trim to finish off this end of the roofing. I then continued the established roofing pattern across the rest of the bridge. As the trusses angle down towards the decking in the center of the bridge, I'd like to build something here to fill some space and create a stronger visual center. Not knowing exactly what I wanted for this centerpiece, I've been experimenting with some ideas. My first thought was simply to raise up the roof in the center. Then I tried some windowed ideas. This process is mostly just putting something in place so that I can see what I don't like about it. As I learn what I don't want, the correct solution grows ever closer. In the end, I combined a raised roof with a peaked one by one. Now, if you don't like the way this centerpiece looks, neither did I. I had spent about an hour building this, and when it was finished, I didn't like it. Something was wrong. The trusses that I had previously enjoyed looking at now seemed disjointed and chaotic. I spent some time studying the bridge and decided to widen the stone pier. Once the pier was widened, the center of the bridge took on a more pleasing look. This stronger, unified section provides a more satisfying place for the eye to rest before wandering off once again to trace the angles of the trusses. At least, that's how I feel about it. Let me know what you think in the comments. And here is the secondary use for the abutment that I told you about earlier. It's a guard post. A simple place for a village guard to escape from bad weather or sit down and have a meal. There's nothing fancy here. It's very small and purely functional. I changed the entryways and added a wolf adornment. These are almost too big to be this close to the ground, but I like the way the angled beams seem to suggest the front legs of the wolf. And on top of the centerpiece, I added these two raven adornments. The wolf and raven have given me an idea for the next build, but we'll cross that bridge in the next episode. Meet me here next time and we'll build something new.